Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program today. I'm sure glad you took the time to join us, and I believe you're going to be glad you did. Uh, we've been doing these, these tapings for a few months now, and we are so excited. As I've said before, I'm an old school preacher. I've been traveling in person all over the world for decades now, and it's very, very exciting for me to be able to come to you through the miracle of modern technology. I was getting, actually getting a little dissatisfied with the fact that as a traveling minister, I would maybe teach a congregation once a year, at most twice a year. And I did newsletters, but as far as really having a, a way to regularly connect to people, I just didn't have it. And it didn't seem to bother me for a long time, but recently I've begun to, you know, really crave the, the, the uh, ability to connect, to teach, to take the things that God's put in my heart, which to, just got to a breaking point. I just felt like I got to get this message out to more people. And then this opportunity came along and we began to do these good news programs. And what, a, what an outlet it's been for me. I'm learning. I'm certainly not skilled at this. There's so many things that you know that you, you do wrong as you begin. And, and, but, but it's the message that I want to focus on. It's the message that needs to get out. And one of the things that has excited me more than any other is we're beginning to get some feedback. We're beginning to see that people are, are watching, listening, they're tuning in, and the program's helping them. And I can't even tell you what that means to me. I'd like to invite you to come to our website and visit us. Give me some comments. We read them. Uh, they mean the world to me. I know you're out there. We read every name, every comment. We pray over you. We pray for you. And I just can't tell you how glad I am to have you there right now listening to the, the, the Word today. Let me just give you this. I, I want to just mention a few names of some people that have responded uh, just to let you know that we appreciate you. You're probably uh, watching right now. Uh, there's Carol from Maryland and there's uh, Rachel. Uh, Marlene from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Now, I've never preached in Pennsylvania, but I'm glad to have Marlene there. James from Grand Junction, Colorado. We're glad to have you there. Uh, Benta. And here's a Doris from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, Sharon from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, I just can't tell you how happy it makes me to know that all this investment's worth, worth it because you're there. We have what I call the good news family out there. You're my audience now. And I'm so happy to take the truths that God's given me that are life changing, that I'm actually responsible for and share them with you regularly on this program. We are doing some other things as well. We're doing podcasts. We're, gonna, we're doing a YouTube channel. And so if you're familiar with all of these various mediums, you, you can go out and find us in different places and I can be your companion and help you grow spiritually. And like I like to say, put back into you what living life in this world takes out of you. You need a good diet of the Word of God. And this is not, couldn't be your only uh, nourishment, but it could certainly be an aid to you. It's fresh. I, I, these revelations God has shared with me, some of them, I, you know, I've not heard anybody else teach quite that way. And that's the comment I get a lot of times is I haven't ever thought of it that way before. Well, this is tailor made just for you. I believe the Holy Spirit will help me say things that will minister to you personally that will make a difference in your life. So I want to share with you one email that I received from a brother named Masa. And he said this, he says, Got to know you through gospeltruth.tv. Your messages speak to my spirit man. He said, I want to encourage you to continue to share bold and simple, yet life-changing truth of God's word from your heart. He said, no mention necessary as far as I'm concerned about your message not being eloquent or funny. <laughs> Actually, you've been very, you have a very entertaining sense of humor, and I enjoy hearing it. Well, I enjoy bringing it to you, Masa. I hope you're watching today, and rather than email you back, I thought I would just thank you on the program. 
He said, I'm excited for you to expand your ability to reach more people through gospeltruth.tv. And I couldn't agree more. What an opportunity that uh, this is for our ministry. And what an opportunity is for me to connect with more people. We are talking about Jesus. We are on a journey. Actually, these programs do build one upon another. Uh, when uh, the, the Bible talks about teaching, line upon line, precept upon precept. And as we go through this teaching, it's actually the story of man's redemption. I love the content. I love what the Bible has to say about our redemption. It literally starts in Genesis at the creation of the world. We even get a little view of pre-creation and what God was thinking, what was in his heart. And, and the story goes all the way through the fall of man and then Jesus coming to redeem us and the new creation and the new heavens and the new earth. I call it a, a, the greatest story ever told. But so many questions are answered as we go through the story of redemption, the teaching of redemption. And I'm trying to do it very deliberately, very thoroughly. I'm not in a hurry, as you can see. And I haven't had this opportunity in my whole life. Usually my services are limited to three or four services at a time, maybe four or five hours at a time uh, that I prepare for and travel somewhere and speak. But this is my program and, and uh, my teaching, and it has been a thrill to just, uh, just take the content of the Word of God. And, and I keep getting more revelation as we go. But we're in a section now that I call Jesus Our Savior. You can download those study notes from our website. That's free. We'll mail them to you if you're in the continental U.S. We have a lot of uh, product on our website that you may be interested in. The people's names that I read, they've downloaded or they've purchased product. We even have product downloads for people who are overseas. We can't really mail uh, actual CDs and whatnot to you, but, but you can download them from our website and we're getting more and more. In fact, if you see a product on our website, a recording that you would like to download that we can't mail to you, if you just request it, we could probably make it available for download. We want to get uh, everything we have, you know, available in every medium in every way possible. So just let us know if there's something that you'd like uh, that we can't mail to you and we'll get that done. The subject of Jesus is so important. And we've taken plenty of time to talk about Him, and I never feel like I do Him justice. He's always more beautiful and wonderful, magnificent than words can describe. He's the Savior. He's the Lord. He's the most important personality in the world. There's nobody like Jesus. So we have talked about how Jesus is really a divisive character. He he's a, causes the world to divide and to take up sides. I mean, you can't be neutral on the Jesus issue. We talked about how He was our substitute and what He did for us. We even went through the entire process of His uh, trial, His betrayal, His his, um, his death, His burial, His resurrection, and His ascension. Those are all so, so important in our understanding of our redemption. But today I want to talk about Jesus as the creator of all things or the reason behind all things, the centrality of Jesus and how He is central to the entire universe. And that's, that's kind of a, a, big, a big statement when... You know, the fact is, you could go out in the world today and live for months at a time and never even hear His name mentioned, unless it's in a, in, a, in a cursing way. And yet, Jesus is the most important single human being that's ever been born. Yeah, He was, he was a man. He is a man, and He's God. But He's the most important figure in history. And I'm going to give you some reasons for that. I'm going to take you to the Scriptures and show you some of the most precious truths that I know about the man, Jesus. So let's go to Colossians chapter 1. And I'm going to take you to two different places because they say the same thing. We're going to start in Colossians 1, and then we'll go to John 1. And Colossians 1, uh, it, it, as I said, they state the same truth in a little different way. And you'll, you'll see that as we go through this. But in Colossians 1, as we start here in verse 16, it says, For by Him 
all things were created. And this is Jesus. By Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. Isn't that powerful? This puts Jesus in the center of everything. And I don't know if you've thought about this before, but Jesus is, is really a central figure. If you could see the whole universe in the Spirit, you would just see Jesus. You would see Jesus' name everywhere, branded onto the whole universe, because all of it exists, here it says, by Him, through Him, and for Him. So I want to go back now and read this again. Instead of using Him, I want to put the word Jesus in this scripture because it, 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 made it, it makes it read a little different. It doesn't change the meaning, but it does bring this truth out a little bit more clearly. Let's do this again, For, starting in verse 16. For by Jesus all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Jesus and for Jesus. And Jesus is before all things, and in Jesus all things consist. Jesus, 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 Jesus. How is that so? In fact, you, we read the creation story. It says, Genesis 1-1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It really doesn't mention Jesus, certainly not the name of Jesus. However, here it tells us that all things were created through Jesus, and by Jesus, and for Jesus. So it puts him in the center. Now, let's go on over to John chapter 1, and we're going to do the same thing because he talks about the same subject. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Isn't that interesting? If you read Genesis 1, 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And so it kind of shows us the beginning of all creation. But here in John 1, 1, it's like an update, a New Testament update to Genesis 1.1. And what he's saying is, in the beginning, not only did God create the heavens and the earth, but in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now in verse 14, here in John 1, he says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So obviously, the Word here he's talking about is Jesus. So he's telling us that Jesus was with God in the beginning, and Jesus was God in the beginning. Jesus was with God and He was God. And you put that along with Colossians 1 and all things were created through Jesus, by Jesus, and for Jesus. He really, it, it really puts Jesus in the center. In fact, if you read the entire Bible and you understand the Old Testament in light of New Testament realities, the entire Bible points to Jesus. The Old Testament points forward to Jesus, the coming of the Messiah. The Gospels reveal Him. And then the epistles and the rest of the New Testament point back to Jesus and talk about what He did for us and who we are now because of it. And then in Revelation, you see the coming of Jesus. So the, the, no wonder he's called the Word because the whole Bible is about him. The whole, the, his whole life was an expression of God. He was the express image of God's person. He was the Word of God, the will of God made flesh. These are foundational truths, but very important truths. And now let's read on. Verse 2, Jesus, He was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Those are just comforting words. Wow, this is the beginning of the New Testament. The Gospel of John, you know, is one of the four Gospels that begin our introduction to the Lord Jesus and the new covenant that He was going to make with humanity. And I like the way he starts it out. He starts out just the way the Old Covenant began, in the beginning. But let's put Jesus' name in these verses again like we did in Colossians 1, and we'll see how it reads and how, 
how it makes Jesus such a central figure. Let's do it again. Verse, John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Now, in the future, we're going to talk about the Trinity, there, that God is made up of three personalities, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're all equally God, but they have different roles. So here, but it's, here it says, in the beginning was Jesus, Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. So the scriptures do not contradict themselves. Jesus is deity. He's God. He's God the Son. And God Almighty is God the Father. And then there's God the Holy Spirit. But Jesus has a special relationship with the, the creation, and He has a special relationship with mankind. And, and that's what we're going to bring out. That's what these scriptures are identifying here, is the, the special place that Jesus holds, Jesus, the Son, the special place He holds in humanity, in all of creation. And it may be something that you've not seen before. So let's read on. Verse 2, Jesus was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made through Jesus, and without Jesus, nothing was made that was made. Isn't that powerful? Jesus was involved from the beginning, and it had to be that way because, because God is a three-part being. He's, he's, God is the same yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. God has always been a three-part being. He's always been God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But in the New Testament, we begin to see the revelation of Jesus and the role that He plays in creation and in redemption. And these, these scriptures make it clear that Jesus has a special connection to us. And I just want to take you back to the beginning and talk about this just a little bit. And we may continue this in other programs. But if you could imagine God as a trinity, a three-part God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We spent a lot of time talking about God's dream. And God's dream was to have a family. God wanted to create people just like Himself. He wanted people to choose Him. He wanted them to have a free will. He wanted them to have the ability to make choices. He didn't want to create robots. He, he didn't want pets that were pre-programmed to love Him. He wanted people that had, that he wanted free moral agents that could choose to love him the way he's chosen to love us. Now, God already made his choice. His choice was you. And Ephesians 1 4 says, He's chosen us in him. He chose us in him uh, to be adopted, to be his sons and daughters. That's the way God wanted us. He chose us, but he wanted us to have the right to choose him. Well, God knows everything, and God knew before the beginning that if He created mankind the way He wanted to, that they would have the ability to make choices, and He also knew that they would choose sin. Nothing catches God by surprise. So under those conditions, I don't believe a good God would have ever even gone forward with the plan of creation. He wouldn't create a world full of people just to die and go to hell. He wouldn't create, this isn't a human experiment. He didn't just make us and turn us loose to see what would happen. It was a plan. This is a divine plan. You're in the middle of a divine plan. And the motive behind it was love, not hate. The motive behind it was blessing, not cursing. And Jesus is central to this whole, this whole operation because God knew that mankind would sin. And being a good God, I believe He would have just scrapped the whole thing. You know, when God came into the garden after Adam and Eve sinned, He wasn't surprised. It's not like, you know, there's several things that God never says. One of them is oops. God never says oops. God never says, you know, I wasn't there. God, there, God's omniscient. He knows everything and He's everywhere and He's all powerful. He knew we were going to sin. And under those conditions... I don't believe He would have ever created the earth and ever put mankind here. But before there was anything but a dream in the heart of God, just a dream for a family, there was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And I believe that there was a conference, if you could say it that way. 
And God the Son stood up and said, Father, create that, that world and fill it with humanity. I know they're going to sin. I know they're going to fall away. And I know the price that's going to have to be paid. And I know the destruction and devastation it's going to cause to everything that you make. But you make them. And I'll come. And I'll die for them. I'll be their Savior. I will be their Redeemer. In other words, you make it and I'll pay for it with my own life. I'll literally become a man. I'll come into their world. I'll take the abuse, the misunderstanding, and the hatred, and I'll die for their sins. I'll give it all so that you can have your family. That's why the Bible says that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That plan was already in place. Before we ever had a problem, there was an answer. And His name is Jesus. To me, that just blows me away. The fact that, that God created us knowing we were going to mess up, knowing that sin was going to destroy everything that He made, and yet the answer was provided by the Son of God. He said, I'll pay for it. I'll make it possible. I'll die in their place so that you can have your family. That gives Jesus a central place in all that God has done. That makes Him a central figure. Whether people like it or not, whether they agree with it or not, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for Jesus. I, I, I contend that God would have never created a world without a Savior. He would have never gone forward with this whole plan of creation without a Savior. What that means is the world wouldn't be here. The stars wouldn't be in the sky. There would be no universe that is expanding in all directions, as they tell us. There wouldn't be a, 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 an ecosystem. There wouldn't be a plant kingdom, an animal kingdom. There wouldn't be a blue sky. There would be nothing if it weren't for Jesus. But because Jesus was willing to be the Savior, because Jesus was willing to pay a debt that He didn't know, that hadn't even, been, hadn't, even, hadn't even come into being yet, the decision was made. He stepped forward and became that man. Nothing will ever change that. Jesus did for you what nobody else could do. Jesus did for you what only He could do. And because of that, He's Lord. Because of that, He's the Savior. Because of that, He's the King of kings. Because of that, He's the Redeemer. He's the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. There's not enough titles to bestow on Jesus when you realize without Him, we wouldn't be here. Um, maybe I should say it this way. Without His willingness, without His willingness to come and become one of us, to, 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 to pay that price, to endure the suffering... That was pre-planned, pre-ordained, and, and agreed to before you were ever born. These, to me, are some of the most liberating truths in the Bible. Jesus holds a place with humanity that no one else will ever hold. Whether people are loyal to Him or not, whether they know Him or not, whether they acknowledge it or not, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Savior. All things were created by Him, for Him, and through Him. And by Him all things consist. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We owe Him a debt we can never repay. And you know, He understands that. He knew that before it happened. But if you think that, that man's sin was a surprise to God, you don't know God. If you think that Adam's transgression and plunging the whole world into sin and, and to the curse of the law. If you think God, that caught him by surprise, you don't know God very well. He knew it all before it ever happened. And he did it anyway. You know why? Because he wanted you and he wanted me. For that reason, I'm thankful to Jesus. I don't, we will never be able to thank him enough for what he's done for us. And I'm so glad to be alive today. How about you? I'm so glad to know the truths that I know. And the more I learn about Jesus, the more beautiful He becomes. He has no peers. He has no equals. He has no competition. There's nobody like Jesus. Well, I hope that's encouraged you today. I want to 
continue this truth on in the next program. I'd like to read through these scriptures again and just kind of reaffirm these things because they bear repetition. These truths have impacted me, changed the way I view life, the past and the future. More than anything, they reveal the love that God has for us and the links that He went to to make it possible for you and I to breathe, to have a chance to know Him. It's fulfilling today just to know God and to know His Word. But the more you learn, the stronger you get, the more you grow, the more you mature. So I hope you've gotten something out of this today. And we've got a, a series called Jesus the Messiah that is on our website available to you. The announcer will tell you how to get that. And it just takes Old Testament scriptures, all of the clues that God left us through the Old Testament, and it gives undeniable proof that Jesus is who He said He was. He's the Messiah, the Redeemer, King of kings and Lord of lords. I hope you're as happy to discover that truth as I am. And I look forward to being with you again in the next program. We'll continue this teaching. Until then, we've run out of time. May God's best be yours. Jesus used the Bible to prove who he was to the early church. These same truths can be used today to establish his identity beyond any doubt. Order your copy today of Jesus the Messiah. Visit our website to order at gregfritz.org. Want more good news? Visit our website anytime, gregfritz.org, for more teaching materials. That's gregfritz.org. I hope you've enjoyed the teaching on this program as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. And after all we've covered to this point, there's so much more I want to say. And if you like this and you want me to continue bringing these programs to you, you could help me. And you can help me by doing three things. One, you could go to my Facebook page and like us or follow us. That'll give us an instant uh, knowledge that you're out there, instant feedback. And I would love to know that. Number two, go to our website and check out our products. If you purchase a product, you're going to help me make more programs and it'll be a blessing to you also. And number three, if you were to give us, go to the donate button and give us a one-time gift or, or become a monthly partner. That would go so far in helping me continue to do what I'm doing and take the good news to the world. So thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you on the next program. Visit our website, gregfritz.org, and become a partner today. It seems bad news is covering the globe these days, yet God has good news for you that's so good the bad news won't matter anymore. To order your copy of Greg's book, visit our website, gregfritz.org. Coming up next on Good News with Greg Fritz. And because God is so awesome, so wonderful, we know that uh, they all defer to one another. The Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father, and the Spirit uh, is here to not promote Himself, but to promote Jesus. And Jesus said, uh, don't sin against the Holy Spirit, or you, you know, that's something that, that won't be tolerated. So there, there's all this, this unity in the Godhead, but it helps us to understand that God exists in three persons, and you can relate to God on all three levels. 